There is wisdom lurking in the walls and warmth in the rooms. The people come for the sake of the children and stay for the sake of themselves. These words were published in a book called The House, produced by Nunawading North Neighbourhood House in 1979. The words still have meaning today for the many participants who utilise community and neighbourhood houses. This is a story 20 years on about those houses and the support they receive. There are 328 community and neighbourhood houses in Victoria. Australia-wide there are more than 1,000 and the number is growing all the time. The particular communities we will look at are situated in country Victoria in the Loddon Compassby region. The Regional Association of Neighbourhood and Community Houses or Ranch as it is known has a total of 19 houses all catering to a wide range of people and their needs. We take a glimpse at 11 of these houses and talk to the people who keep them open, keep them funded and keep them accessible to the public. Before we do that, it's important to understand that although each house is striving for similar outcomes, each one is run independently by volunteer community members. After setting up a committee of management, these volunteers employ a coordinator, and it is the coordinator working closely with the committee whose job it is to respond to the educational and social needs of each community. Assistance comes from many sources, the State Government Department of Human Services, through the Neighbourhood House Program, provides wages for house coordinators. ACFI, the Office of Adult Community and Further Education, provide funding for educational, vocational and literacy programs. And ANHLC, the Association of Neighbourhood Houses and Learning Centres, offers support, information and training and represents all houses in Victoria. With the help of these organisations, the houses are in a better position to provide and develop programs that contribute positively to the health and well-being of their communities. More from Cathy Guinness. The whole thing has grown from the one network in Melbourne, this small number of houses, until now there are 16 networks right throughout Victoria. So in each region, houses get together and work with each other. Our role as the overall association, the statewide association, is very much similar to the, the role of Ranch because um, we provide support to all the different neighbourhood houses. I think it's that opportunity for people to get together and, and work things out for themselves. It's strengthening the community to be self-sufficient. It happens in a whole lot of ways, but that's what I'd say the central thing is. You're not waiting for somebody else to do it, but you're actually saying we can do it and if only we work together, we can solve this problem. And people get strength from realising that they're not just one isolated group of people trying to do things with the community, but it's the same around Victoria. Geographically, the area we're looking at the Loddon Compassby region is very large. The Regional Association of Neighbourhood and Community Houses, known as Ranch, acts as an umbrella organisation for the 19 houses in this area. Ranch facilitates information sharing and exchange between these houses. Their regular meetings offer support, information and training. Community neighbourhood houses have come a long way in 20 years, and as Leonore Bull recalls, it was a humble, but noble beginning. It was a group of people um, coming together who, who felt that there was a place for a group that was neither political nor church oriented nor service oriented but just a place where people could get together to build community, to be friends, to get to know each other and it, so it's crossed all those sorts of divisions that occur in a community. And, and that's always been the case. So it's very strong on community base. There was no ranch in the beginning, but today the organisation works in with all 19 houses in the Loddon Compassby region. Ranch meet regularly to discuss the ongoing business of community neighbourhood houses. Each meeting is seen as a development of a system of information exchange and a bigger voice in accessing recognition for their work. 
Trevor Dickinson has been the chairperson for Ranch and is associated with Wood End House. We are one of 19 in the London Mallee Campaspe region uh, and we have an umbrella organisation called Ranch which uh, we have a meeting every six weeks at the various houses. Ranch has many stories to tell because neighbourhood and community houses offer educational programs and social activities in a caring and safe environment where the individual's personal development is encouraged. Any member of the community who participates will tell you this. We talked to Iris Faulkner who attends painting classes at Eagle Hawk House. First of all, we outline what we're going to paint with a pencil and uh, then we talk about the painting to one another and we show each other our paintings. And it's great to see it uh, each week as we're progressing. It's great to see it all come to being. And uh, we're so excited about it once we've finished. To think that we've done, we never ever thought we'd be able to do it. Everybody gets together and to be able to do these things. Otherwise, if we had no community house, people would just be staying home, not doing anything, and it brings people out, mm. such as myself. Mm. It is so relaxing that um, I never ever knew, thought I would be able to do any painting at all. I've never even tried it till I came here and started. The type and availability of courses offered are a direct and flexible response to the needs of the community, but they are also largely dependent on funding for paid teachers, as well as the availability and contribution of volunteers. Volunteers are an integral part of every aspect of neighbourhood and community houses, from its activities to its character. One of these valued people who shared her knowledge with other people was Rabina Williams, who taught needlecraft, Rabina from Wood End House. I've always loved teaching people. And I think it brings out the best in me because then you see, I will do something or think, ah oh, yes, well if I do that, I can show them at the class down here and so on. So that's how it started. Then I run, as I say, the crochet class, which now has become a craft class because somebody would say, oh, well, now I know how to do crochet, perhaps I could do something else. It's very relaxing. Well... <laughs> and where did you learn the skill from? I did two terms before we came to Australia, two terms at the Royal School of Needlework. And I learned, I think, probably uh, basic embroidery, cut work, and um, things like that. And having loved it, and embroidery is my first love, um, I suppose I've just kept on going and to the almost exclusion of housework. Because <laughs> that can be a bind. There's a lot of more interesting stuff to do. There's fun things to do and you get to do play lots of games and do activities. And this is from painting of the community house. And that's what community and neighbourhood houses do best, offer a lot of interesting things to do. Perhaps Deanne will be a volunteer of tomorrow, but let's go back to the volunteers of today. At an open day at the Wedderburn Community House, we caught up with coordinator Margaret Armstrong. Uh, most of the volunteers are on our committee and we have perhaps three other volunteers that come in that aren't on the committee. We like to have two volunteers here each day along with the coordinators and the, um, the secretary. We also have someone doing um, we have someone doing work skill at the present time and we have someone doing, it's not work experience, he said, because he's left school, but he's gaining office skills. There was much to learn at every house we visited. All were different, although there were some surprising similarities. Take a Tuka and Kangaroo flat, for instance. Both centres are housed in Ministry of Housing accommodation, 
both pay a token $1 a week in rent. And there's more. They both offer programs for people with disabilities, as well as their education programs and recreational activities. At Kangaroo Flat House, we were invited to a games day. At Achuka House, we were invited to a birthday party for Nunzio. The similarity is that funding is not available for these types of programs, and again, that's where the volunteers play a vital role. Ready, ready, set, go! Of course, it's not always a party, and the rent for suitable premises is not always a dollar a week. Some local councils do offer varying levels of support, but it's not always easy to convince local councils of the role neighbourhood houses can play. Castle Main House coordinator Ron Moore takes up the story. Well, Castle Main Community House has been uh, here in Castle Main operating for about 10 years. Um, in that time, it's gone through different locations, and we're here in a small suburban house which we pay uh, rental rates for, that's market rental rates. Um, that's something we don't want to do, but we've been uh, forced through that situation. We'd like uh, more support from local government. They've uh, not been wonderful at coming to the fore and helping us, uh, and I think they've been very tentative about that. I probably don't realise the potential that community houses have uh, and the good that they can do in the community. Even with Commonwealth and State Government funding through ACFI and other organisations, there are many ways in which local councils can contribute. Craig Hunt from Eagle Hawk explains one of the ways his house has been assisted by local council. Last year our playground equipment was declared unsafe and we've been able to get funding through the, the new Bendigo Council to um, purchase some new playground equipment, so that's really useful. Generally speaking, the courses with a more formal structure and defined educational curricula are well received. One of the reasons for the popularity of such classes is explained by the regional manager of ACFI, David Bode. In terms of going on to um, other courses, that's a, again a, a good general question because this region of the nine across the state in fact has the lowest proportion of adults who have got post school education qualifications. So we've got a long way to go and, and we, of course we keep repeating that claim and um, endeavouring to get additional funds to, to help compensate, primarily because of the, the isolation between centres in the region. There are many reasons why people choose their community and neighbourhood houses to undertake further educational programs. Some may find it easier than others, but it doesn't matter who you are as long as you're prepared to give it a go. We spoke to two students who were doing just that, first Rodney, then Graham. Well, I was doing, when I had my job, I uh, did literacy program in Kyneton, and uh, I found it interesting over there. We did many things, reviews and all that. And then from, from there, I went from there to, to Lanceville. and used the skills from over there to, to here, sort of vice versa. So it's been good. I want to expand my knowledge a little bit more to, uh, I suppose as Spock would say, go where no one has gone before and this is what I want to do with my life, is that I want to expand my knowledge as far as much as I can, but uh, it's been fun, so uh, I'm enjoying it. Well I heard it through Deet, um, oh, about three years ago I started this course or one of these courses. And um, the main reason I came here for was to learn to read and write, which I'm learning. It's taken a fair bit of time because I had trouble at school, I couldn't read and write. Um, and it's been real good doing the course. It's no secret that rural Victorian community and neighbourhood houses have challenges associated with isolation, distance, changing economics and diminishing population.